very happy to uh, to be here. Thanks for the thanks for the opportunity. Uh, this talk is really about how you know one of our close partners and customers, uh, SoftBank, is uh, is using our technology to solve problems that are uh, that are very real world. Um, uh, but before I uh, transfer the mic over to uh, Yamauchi San. I'd like to say a few words about uh, some of the work that we have done recently. Uh, many of you might have uh, attended Mike Biersuk, our CEO, who's uh, sitting in the audience, uh, his, uh, his presentation, and we might otherwise be uh, very well known to you. But uh, yeah, we'll take this as an opportunity to maybe refresh your knowledge about uh, Q-Control. Um, what we do is build uh, AI-powered error suppression software. Um, and we fall under the category of infrastructure software. And what we do is make quantum hardware uh, useful. And our pioneering, almost pioneering contribution to this sector is the introduction of some key layers in the quantum computing stack above the physical qubit hardware. This includes the quantum firmware, uh, compilation, uh, uh, error correction methods. Um, and you know what, what, the reason we, we did all that was to solve one problem that uh, afflicts the whole uh, quantum computing industry, and that is that uh, there are hardware errors uh, that uh, you know that that impede meaningful demonstrations uh, to to be conducted on on real world quantum computers, and this is almost holding back uh, the whole quantum computing sector. Right, this is one reason why people have been skeptical about how long it'll take, etc. So, uh, and I'm not going to dwell into this too much, but as, as you all know, uh, you know there, there is a lot of noise in quantum computers, and the question is, how do we remove that noise? Um, our, the way in which our software works, uh, you know, and, and this is specifically called error, error suppression, is, uh, is through a set of steps. Right, and uh, you know those of you who have looked into the problem know that taking out all of the error requires a whole number of steps that have to be linearly ex executed. Uh, but it's a very very difficult problem. Um, and, uh, you know, as some of you might have heard, Mike. Uh, you know, when he came out of Harvard, uh, you know there were maybe twelve people specialized in this in this whole area. And if you look at the whole pipeline, starting from input code uh, through compilation all the way through to results, any one step, even in, even compilation, can itself be a lifetime of research, right? Uh, and this is what researchers like to do. They really try to understand the problem. They like to benchmark different alternatives, et cetera. But decades of work has been put into, um, into the, the products that we have and the technology that we have. And you know, our, our, our team uh, is, is really the world's foremost team of uh, quantum control experts. And, uh, and we, uh, we put a lot of effort to package all these solutions. But before I, I get into our solution, let's actually walk through some of the, some of the challenges. Right, uh, a compilation. You know, there's a lot of installation, configuration. Similarly, you know, mapping your your circuit to the to the actual hardware, to the to the pulse design, where there's a lot of uh, ma manual work involved. Uh, to uh, to the uh, to the work on the actual computer, where you know your code will need to get executed. And once you have the results, you have to perform something called as measurement error mitigation because your actual solution will uh, have additions of noise that come from uh, various sources. Let us say you are able to take each one of these steps and, uh, and, and maybe even get optimal solutions. What's going to happen is that when you put it all together, you'll find out that there will be incompatibilities between the various steps. And in total, uh, you will have a lot of overhead. This is why this is a very, very difficult problem. And this is not this is not simple post processing. This is not okay. I'm going to run a problem on a quantum computer and post process the results, because the, this whole pipeline, the, the the reason we are doing all of this is so you can avoid the noise in the first place and make your system resilient to the noise as much as possible, and in doing so, achieve the maximum possible uh, performance uh, from your quantum computer. Um, and uh, and what we did uh, was. This is our, our contribution to the whole industry. We put the whole stack together. Uh, we, used the, we used all of the knowledge that we have. And to, to, it took years of uh, perfection. And, uh, and yeah, now we have a fully integrated pipeline that we are, by the way, constantly improving. Um, uh, and it, you know, we created this uh, autonomous, completely autonomous AI-driven tool chain 
that suppresses errors, right? Uh, not mitigates errors, suppresses errors. And so the, the, your quantum computer is running at its absolute maximum possible performance, only limited by hardware, without extra extra overhead, right? And you know we call this 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 product that runs on the cloud as Fire Opal. Um, the the way in which these methods work is published in the published in the literature where we talk about the, the physics involved in in uh, in each of these components, and. Uh, how do we know it works? Uh, our results uh, uh, speak for themselves, um, and, and you know we have uh, we have various publications out there. Uh, but the, the typical results that you obtain with uh, the software that we have uh, uh, gives you the ability to run much deeper circuits. Uh, why do deeper circuits matter? If you're, for example, if you're in the financial services industry, you want to run very deep circuits. Uh, the number of short counts that you that you require typically to get the right answer is drastically reduced. And why do short counts matter? Because uh, quantum computing access time is fairly expensive, and you want to, as researchers, you want to get your results in as quick a time as possible. And finally, um, uh, you know the performance gains that we deliver are typically you know in several orders of of magnitude. And um, I have references to uh, the published literature as well. So uh, you know, talking about the the previous Grover search uh, problem that I had shown, where the the, the default uh, uh, you know system performance is 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 noisy, Q control software transforms that, and you you get the get the right answer typically within the first few attempts. So with with minimal overhead on the on the on the system, which results in you know more efficient uh, execution. And uh, here is an example of how we are driving innovations in this uh, in this industry and solving some very very fundamental problems. Uh, as you very well know, combinatorial optimization problems, binary optimization problems are ideally suited uh, for quantum computers. Until now, it's been typically like quadratic uh, optimization type problems, but now we have gone beyond, right? We took a 127 qubit icing spin glass problem uh, where you have to find the, the ground state energy uh, and, and, and find it as quickly as possible and find it as, you know, as accurately as possible. And, uh, and you know, the, the kind of problem that I describe has, is, is amongst the largest uh, you know, optimization problems that have ever been run on a gate-based quantum computer, and uh, the the results are transformational. Right, we we easily beat uh, what you can typically get with a, a best-in-class local solver, which typically uses like a like a greedy optimization to uh, you know looking at a random distribution of uh, of candidate solutions. And what we achieve is very, very close, or at least we uh, we get as close to the real answer. What, what the, the the red vertical line that you see is the ground truth, and this is a this is a this is a, a maximally optimized CPLEX solver. Uh, you know, we're not qu claiming quantum advantage here, but we get as close to the ground truth as as, as possible. Um, and uh, the the best result that you can ever get with annealing solution. Is is shown in this uh, in this in this green bar, right? And that that's the be that's the best in class, right? And previously, it had been thought that annealing machines are tend to be the best on on uh, optimization type problems, but we uh, we with this example, we just beat the annealer by fifteen hundred x. So uh, so yeah, I mean, th this is just one example of the type of result uh, that we have gotten with uh, with the our error suppression pipeline. I'm going to pass it on to. Uh, to Hiroshi-san, uh, our partner at uh, SoftBank, to, uh, and let him talk about how he used uh, our pipeline to solve a different type of problem, a, a quantum kernel uh, problem. So, Hiroshi-san. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. I am Yamauchi from SoftBank and at our leading edge laboratory. Uh, beyond 5G is uh, what we are studying together with digital twin and multimedia technology and uh, quantum technologies. And this time, IBM quantum computer Kawasaki uh, went into operation last year. And by using certain use cases, demonstration using quantum computer was what we aim to conduct and automation of network operation was identified as the area where we use kernel 
and Professor Sogabe and uh, Professor Lot from Keio University and we so conducted the three-party research. This paper itself was uploaded onto the archive last month, but in September, the Quantum Week also adopted this paper. Uh, firstly, uh, here is explanation on problem setting as the network configuration. As you see, here is the nationwide network configuration. So access, fixed network, and from area to core, and from IX to internet. So this is the structure. So basically, so corporate, this is the configuration of corporate network. Smart VPN, smart internet are the services for corporate clients which are being delivered. And here is the troubleshooting workflow. Uh, we are monitoring individual services, but uh, clients sometimes let us know of issues they are facing, and we conduct troubleshooting of networking uh, with our network engineering team 24 hours a day. In some cases, Operators or engineers are dispatched to the client site to replace some components or implement some workaround uh, to restore the system. The use case using quantum computer this time uses this system. So this kind of system behavior well, service path is identified from database and each device's IP address is identified and we log in there and through commands, the areas uh, to address uh, is identified, but the network itself is growing bigger and bigger. So from manual work, uh, we are switching to the automation using system. That's we what we have been promoting and uh, recently, automation through machine learning by AI is something we've been promoting recently. And the data set um, from the system uh, log, the data set has been extracted. And uh, just like in NIST, on the horizontally, there are type, different types of command. And vertically, well, again, these plots show the uh, abnormalities that comes out from the command exercised. And if there is no abnormality, you see the blank. So abnormal patterns are seen as the feature vector uh, horizontally, and uh, vertically, you see the failure patterns. So there are seven types of failure types, as you see on bottom right. So based upon these failure types, data set is created. In setting problem, data set is learned by the system, and the abnormality patterns, what kind of the classes of abnormality patterns are estimated. So that's the approach. And this is the system deployment. And this is the workflow in the case of system deployment. So this is offline learning flow shown by the solid line. And using the learned model, the dotted line or online, the class estimation is done. So with classical computers well, and quantum computers, the calculations are done, performed by classical side is this side, and quantum uh, calculation side is this side, kernel uh, is used. And 120 dimension, but uh, as we perform 
uh, the experiment, the dimensions are reduced to 50. And the training uh, data is divide, divided and parameterized, and parameterized uh, circuit is created. And the internal product calculation is done by quantum computer. And ground matrix is all patterns of uh, feature vectors are taken to calculate the inner product, and the resultant kernel is this ground matrix. And proposed and conventional settings as shown. The conventional Excel and XM, the two vectors that have inner products are to these two vectors, Excel parameterized, Excel is parameterized, and the other circuit is added, and the result is, uh, is measured. So this is what's called conventional. So internal uh, inner product calculation measures the probability probabilistic distribution. A conventional uh, just uh, performs the simple calculation for the proposed. The adjacent qubit, the phase difference is adjusted by Rz. So strength of entanglement uh, for the adjacent parameterized xp and q the alpha coefficient is adjusted, and the estimation or approximation accuracy is adjusted. So entanglement effect through our approach is validated. That's what we have been doing. So tensile network up to 50 qubit, the features are evaluated, and the result is this. The proposed orange line. Orange line is proposed, and the blue is conventional. Classical SVM is used uh, for the green, and the proposed result, on average, is outperforming. So it's a hundred times. A test data training data are divided. And that's done 100 times, and the results are evaluated and proposed, outperformed. Uh, sometimes we see the classical outperform, having been outperformed, but uh, we are seeing the changes in accuracy. So 0 0.6 is where we uh, attain the peak. As you see here, the alpha parameter entanglement uh, strength is adjusted to calculate the kernel, then depending on the types of data set, certain optimum value is derived. So the data set, it depends on the characteristics of data set, but uh, number of qubit, uh, what is the scale of a qubit for calculation, and how do we adjust alpha parameter? So depending on those things, we could address uh, to a certain um, degree of uh, data sets. So up to this, I've explained the simulation result. And next, IBM Kawasaki was used for performing experiment. But uh, in the first place, classical SVM, SVM, 85 to 89% was obtained for the data set uh, which we used for calculating kernel. And and simulation is considered as the ideal. So blue, blue is a state vector simulator that can calculate only up to 30 uh, qubit. And orange is the tensor network calculated result. So tensor network has some, um, some variance, but uh, Green is IBM original error mitigation M3 and optimization level 3. So to a certain extent, on the side of IBM, they uh, did well, and the, the result is green. And the 
red bar is the estimation accuracy you and at the 30 qubit point 82 percent was the value attained if uh, IBM is used the ratio is 50 percent so by using Q control so this much of gain was obtained as a result 80 percent of accuracy was obtained with the real machine that's what we've confirmed and it's a practical result that we could uh, confirm and this side at the 30 qubit level 784 point inner product calculation was made so ideal simulation this is custom data so relative differential is shown by this distribution but the IBM uh, green points the based upon the result of inner product the Q control is used overall this level of the accuracy was obtained so Q controls accuracy or performance in this experiment uh, was uh, as shown and uh, seen to have contributed in boosting accuracy. So that's the result of the experiment we've conducted. Thank you.